Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. If you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you probably know that I like things that are like ordinary objects, but ridiculously small. Arcade cabinets, hard drives, cameras, musical instruments, RC cars. But I found probably my new favorite small thing that might just top all of these. We all know Tesla coils, right? Those big, several-foot-tall things that go zap? Well, how about we turn that feet into inches? Uh, that's right. This is a tiny Tesla coil. Apparently, it uses 9 to 12 volts and can drive small light bulbs and that kind of thing. You know, nothing that you'd plug into an outlet. Oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. Huh. Okay, so you've got a power switch, transistor, uh, a couple little capacitors, and your power input jack, and then of course your massive coil. Now this is a very simple board. This is definitely easily reverse engineered. Like, you could make one of these easily. And it comes with little standoffs so that you can uh, make it stand up. Oh, and it actually includes a little light bulb here, so that's cool. I will be taking advantage of that. Just for scale, here is a Gamer's Nexus Orb. I mean, the thing is tiny. It's like it easily fits in one's palm. Looks like it'll have three little legs. That's cool. Now, what I'm going to use to power it I don't know if it's center pin positive or center pin negative, and I do think polarity would matter when you're dealing with, uh, I, I don't quite know how these work, but you know, when you're dealing with a field, I would think polarity matters. And also I don't want to blow this, although I don't think those, uh, those capacitors are polar. I, I think those are the type where you can have them any way in the circuit and they work fine. Here, I'll get a close-up shot. Like, like, I can barely fit my finger inside of this. That's how small it is. Also, this is not... That does not look like uh, plastic. I'm pretty sure that's ceramic. That is... Yeah, that's too heavy and, you know... Also, we've got... Soldered... Oh, we've got an LED soldered inside the coil. I don't think that's for any purpose other than making it look cool, though. I wonder how many feet of, of wire are still on this coil. Like... No, I changed that. Yards. Like, it's got this super, super thin wire that there's probably so much of it actually on there. I'm sorry, because of where I'm sitting, it's rather inconvenient to actually do anything on the workspace. It's more for just point the camera at it to demonstrate the product. There we go. It's, these are easier to screw in by holding it with finger. That's funny, they, they sent four standoffs and screws instead of three. So I guess they just include an extra. This actually is feeling like a rather high quality kit. Which is going to be surprising because I bought it from, well, guess where? A, a certain funny, funny website that I've used in the past for pretty much everything that I make fun of on this channel. Oh, did I call that a capacitor earlier? No, that's a resistor. I'm sorry, my eyesight is horrible, so when I was looking at it, I thought it was another one of these little, uh, is that a polymer cap? Yeah, that is, uh, fully assembled. And in, in the reviews, which actually did not seem fake, they were using this little light bulb, which I want to see if it works with an LED, because with polarity, it might not. But, you know, they were using this little LED, holding it near it. I'll see if I can find an adapter, a wall adapter, so I can use it. Here, um, I'm just going to try this little Duracell 9-volt battery. Little light inside of it came on. Oh! 
It actually works. Also, this is not a lamp, this is a vacuum tube. Wow, is this battery just dead? Yeah, no, this battery cannot power a Tesla coil. I've got another 9 volt, which I labeled 8.95 volts. So that's a bit suspicious. This one's probably worn down too, but, you know, we'll see how long we can go with it. Wow! And it's, like, actually good. No way. Look at this. Like, the range on it is decent. So if you really want to beam little electromagnetic radiation onto something, this is great. Now obviously there's a, not enough current to, well first of all, shock you in pretty much any capacity. Like I could probably just like touch this and then t touch an exposed ground wire with absolutely no problem because of course it's from a DC power source. Now if I was using an AC wall adapter I would be a bit more careful with it. Like I might not have all this metal stuff lying around, but you know, <laughs> I love this. Like I was completely expecting it to be a gimmick, but no, it actually works. This is probably my new favorite thing that I bought off Wish. Again, like, I don't know what this style of vacuum tube is called, but in a lot of, like, old audio hardware, these are used as indicator lights because they never burn out. Like, these things have way more endurance and can take a lot more current than just your standard small incandescent bulb, which burn out very easily. So, I mean, just, just look at that. Just look at that. Wireless lights. Am I right, chat? I'm talking more about this tube than the, than the thing itself. Also, it's just flickering on and off because the, uh, the barrel plug here is a bit loose. I've been using this adapter for years. Sorry, I don't want to talk about just the, the light too much, but honestly, this is really cool. I, I love this. This is going to be a thing where I actually leave a link to this kit in the description. Uh, off the top of my head, it was less than $10, and uh, it actually shipped about two weeks before it said it would. So, um, I would actually recommend this. So I am not sponsored, but I'm going to leave that link in the description for anyone who wants to check it out. Oh, also, before I end the video, I want to mention really quickly you can also use it, you know, holding the tube, the vacuum tube, this little guy, by these ends, by the ends of the actual leads. In fact, you can hold it anywhere, and it will still work. Because, you know, the, the electricity just needs to get to there. It doesn't matter if it goes down the wires. So it lights at the same distance. So, like, if the end of the wire is here, it will light. But if I put the end of the bulb there, there we go, it still lights. Because technically it's still traveling the same distance to the actual part that lights. I just thought I should mention that really quickly. Because, you know, it's just creating a field of electricity. It doesn't matter where you put the tube in that field, it will still receive power. And actually, before I end the video, I just remembered I have these. And I wanted to try these with it to see if it can light these very small incandescent bulbs. Okay, not that one. I'll try one of every type. Yeah, it can't, uh, it can't light these little bulbs. Now, of course, these do need quite a lot more current than this would. And looking, looking at it, 2.2 uh, volts is the rating on these. And I know they all work. But, you know, that's, it's interesting that it can light this, but, you know, not a, a filament-based bulb like one of these. Sorry, I know this video, I've, I've like ended the video four times. I've filmed four outros by now, but I keep finding more things that I want to put in. 
So these are called neon indicator lights. Um, the only ones I can find are 110 volts, which is very interesting because this one runs off a of 9 volt. So I was so confused because I couldn't find any 5 volt, 9 volt, or 12 volt variants of these. Just 110 and 120. So yes, how this works, it's like a neon sign. It's a little vacuum tube. Uh, and, you know, it's got gas in there that lights up orange, whatever gas is actually in there. Uh, it lights up orange when it's, you know, activated. Now the thing is, of course, it lights up with the Tesla coil. But, if you just connect it straight to the battery, you get absolutely nothing. No sign of life. So there must be something going on with the voltage here. Like, I don't know how the voltage is being boosted, or if that's just a natural thing that happens with Tesla coils. This transistor could be regulating the voltage and boosting it higher. Um, my knowledge of that is limited, so I don't want to just be putting misinformation out there. And also, this coil is... the wire on here is like hair width. It is a very, very fine wire, and, you know, it's, if you tried to put a lot of voltage through it, this wire would literally evaporate. I've, I've seen it happen with fuses and with, you know, it'd be like a light bulb filament that just burns out. So, obviously, there can't be too much voltage going through it, but it's enough to, to make a... 120 volt neon uh, neon light light up. Apparently if you give these just straight 110, 120 volts they burn out. But you know you'd use like a, a apparently like a 10 or 100 K resistor, maybe even a 1M resistor to just drop it and that wouldn't you're still getting 50 or more volts. So these need a lot of current. So that's, you know, this, this whole thing is just baffling. And also the LED in there, that cannot take 120 volts. That can't take 9 volts. You know, those are made for 3 to 5 volts. Usually 3.3 .3 is a pretty standard for LEDs. So is the resistor just to reduce the 9 volts enough so that it, you know, can go into the LED. I'm going to look at the bands. It is brown, black, red, gold. And it's actually, it's labeled 10K. And then this capacitor is a very small value. I can't read it, but, you know. I don't know why there would be a 10K in there other than to drop the voltage from just the power jack to the LED. And that is my assumption. That is my assumption for what that is for. But please, if anyone has any suggestions or, you know, what, what it is, please tell me in the comments. Now also, if this is neon, I just thought, is it not making it glow electrically? Is it... Because I know that with CFL lamps, the little swirly light bulbs, with more powerful Tesla coils, if you hold a CFL lamp near them, it, it activates the phosphor. It doesn't explicitly go through the circuitry of the bulb. So is that what is happening with the neon? Is it getting... Is it getting power just to the phosphor or you know is just the gas in here getting lit by the it's getting lit <laughs> by the um by the electricity so i think that's what's happening i don't think the electricity is explicitly traveling you know down here and into these little contacts inside of the bulb i think that the gas in here is just getting activated by the electrical field that this produces and that's why hooking it straight to the battery is not going to work. 
I don't quite know how to put it into words, so I hope I'm making sense, but, you know, I... That's definitely what is happening here. Alright, also, quick other interesting thing about these tubes. Um, they were often used in rectifiers, or as rectifiers, because they can take AC current, but they only output DC, which is half of the AC current, which is pretty interesting. So they don't care about polarity, and, uh, you know, they could be used to kind of convert AC to DC, as well as being used as indicator lights in things that use AC power. So a lot of old power strips, you know, the, the red light when you turn it on, um, if it's not an LED, it's probably one of these. So, you know, now that I think about it, there are a lot of places that I've seen these, you know, dimmers for house lights, that kind of thing, you know, with, with like a backlight in them. These are still actually made today and used in a lot of industrial applications because there's literally just not a better solution. So apparently they consume way more voltage than LEDs, like 10 to 20 times, but about a tenth to a hundredth of the current that an LED needs. So it's really convenient that you don't have to use resistors to drop the voltage really low because they can take, you know, a, a 100K resistor and one of these straight from the 120 volt AC. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching. Um, again, if you have any more information about, you know, what's going on here, I would love to know since I'm not very informed about Tesla coils. But that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.